In a story coming from East Sussex, a teenager has pled guilty to the of his own friend. He actually shared the screen with him in his videos. Hi guys, I'm back here with Lewis. This is Lewis, the guy who's done a couple of videos with me, you know. Awesome guy to have around. Heartbreakingly, Mark saw Lewis Ashdown as one of his best friends. Mark Williams had gone missing in June, and his friend Lewis Ashdown had been out with him on that night, but neither of them had returned home. Lewis Ashdown and Mark Williams have not been seen for more than 36 hours. If either Mark or Lewis are reading this, then we would urge them to please make contact to let us or their families know that they are safe. The investigation was now fully underway, and although the police still thought that Lewis was missing, a of his home proved different. Sadly for the family, Lewis will not explain why he did it and they don't understand and have found no answers. Yeah, keep your mate with you, make sure he's someone you can trust, you know, and be careful is all I can say. If you happen to be one of a niche select few 38,906 people from 2019 through 2021 who enjoyed parkour and free running, then you may have in passing watched a channel known as Displays. Perhaps you're already one of his 986 acquainted subscribers, but if you're not, allow me to introduce you to Mark Williams. Finding his passion in parkour and free running, he would often upload his attempts at sneaking into security protected areas, climbing buildings, and escaping from the police. Though as the channel progressed, he would oftentimes find himself taking breaks and weighing the desire to either pursue his dream or growing up and pursuing a more secure career. Life can be a bit of a confusing situation when you're just barely beginning to find yourself. As his mother would later go on to say, Mark was an innocent kid who, in the end, simply just wanted friends. And to Mark, he believed he found this much desired friendship through a fan of his channel. A friend who seemingly shared a similar passion to Mark, the two would often make content together in videos that are still up to this day. Together they would lift each other up when doubts of their success began to creep into their minds, encourage one another, and overall have each other's backs. However, what appeared to be a strong mutual friendship on the surface was soon to be realized as a tragic nightmare that resulted in a three-day missing persons case, followed by an arrest and a twisted confession that shook the quiet town of Uckfield. Now, before we jump into today's story, if you will, allow me to introduce myself. Hi, I'm Wonder, your one-stop shop for calm deep dives on some of the internet's most unsavory characters around. I upload a new deep dive on a bi-weekly basis on Wednesdays at 11am. So if you find you like what you see here today, feel free to drop a like and subscribe with a bell notification on so you don't miss out on any future uploads. I'd really love to see you around. Also feel free to leave a comment down below telling me what you did or didn't like about the video so I can work harder in the future to make this a better viewing experience for you. This is my first entry on the channel involving a more true crime approach, so thank you to the community of this channel for voting for this video today. Alongside me here today is my dear friend Oz Media to act as a secondary voice for you. It's an honor to have him on as a guest to help guide us through this story. I'd also like to say thank you to the channel Ape Huncho, as I first heard of this story through their in-depth coverage on their own channel, so I highly encourage you to go check them out after this video. They cover a lot of true crime and have a vast library of content for you to watch. Without further ado, once more, my name is Wonder and it's phenomenal to have you here today. So sit back, relax, maybe take care of some chores or some homework you might need to knock out, and let's get right into the tragic story of Mark Williams, the rooftop king of Uckfield. Standing on the edge of the roof, you know, everyone's shouting, hey, it's this place, when you're up there. It just gives me this adrenaline through me, and I'm like, it's at one of my high points. Now, I know I just provided a brief summary into Mark's backstory, but I feel we should first take a further look into his life so we can better understand what kind of person Mark was and what his goals for life were before having his ultimately cut short. In a nod to Coffeehouse Crime, let's begin. Located in East Sussex, in the southern region of England, lies a small town known as Uckfield. Home to over 15,000 people and dating as far back as the 12th century, this quiet community is decorated with bountiful local eateries, small businesses, and is situated near breathtaking sites such as the South Downs National Park and many other forests amongst its neighboring rural areas. If you ever found yourself visiting Uckfield, their community website suggests checking out their local attractions such as the Bluebell Railway and the Sheffield Park. 
Gardens. Remaining nearly two hours outside of London, Uckfield manages to keep itself as a unique place to live without sacrificing its authenticity to make itself a larger-than-life scene. It was here in which our character, Mark Williams, would grow up and spend 18 years of his life. Not much is known about Mark and his early years, but from how his loved ones described him, he seemed to be a very awkward yet genuine kid. With hardly having many of his own, Mark dreamt of having friends to share his interests and ideas with. Oftentimes, according to his mother, Mark would sometimes find himself too trusting of those who might not have had his best interests in heart. In Mark's spare time, he found himself becoming an avid fan of popular parkour, free running, and building climbing channels that were dominating in their own respective genre online. Quickly taking up similar interests himself, he began to try and follow in the footsteps of his internet idols. With both a camera and an ambitious dream, Mark Williams and his brother decided to begin their first channel of their own, known at the time as Rooftop Legends. It was here on the channel that the two of them began to upload their own parkour videos, oftentimes with a twist involving escapes from both security officers and actual police. Despite many of the videos being taken down from the channel for reasons we can only assume, we can still find some of their earliest videos, dating back as far as May of 2018, such as Escaping Churchill Square Security, Rooftop Parkour POV, where the two of them, as the title says, escape from security officers after sneaking onto private property, and others where Mark and his brother escape from security at a local stadium. Despite the obvious safety risks involved, from an outside perspective, I can't help but view this as some teenagers having a rather innocent form of rebellion. In 2019, after Mark's brother had decided to step away from what was now known as RoofTube, Mark would once more rebrand his channel into what would become his final online identity, Displace, or Displace34699, possibly as a means to have a fresh start to his solo journey on the platform. Mark continued to upload every so often throughout 2020, admittedly with sporadic gaps of time between videos. At the time, there was no direct explanation as to why there was such a delay. It seemed that the project had become more and more of a side gig, possibly getting swept aside due to the many obligations that life brings. Any questions surrounding Mark's whereabouts were eventually answered when on November 1st, 2020, Mark uploaded a video to his channel titled This Place is Returning. It's here where he explains he had been trying to become a police community support officer, yet had unfortunately been rejected, and that he was coming back possibly with a new phone, better camera, and a stronger drive than before, setting his sights on content creation full time. Alright guys, don't know if you can see me or not, but I promise you this place is coming back. I'm getting a new action cam. I'm getting a new action cam and uh, I'm going to hit some serious videos. I'm just getting myself back in shape again. Especially during the night as well, no one can see me up here. Anyway guys, uh, my phone back. I'm getting a new one soon so I'm going to have to cut this video off quick. Uh, my channel is coming back, I promise you. Um, sorry about the long time, it's, oh, I applied to be a PCSO for some reason and I got rejected so now you know I'm, I'm coming back for long, properly coming back, alright, I'll see you guys. With a promise for higher quality content, Mark resumed uploads the following day. He posted a compilation of funny and memorable moments from his channel over the years, followed by another the following day of an unreleased rooftop climb featuring his brother. On November 6, 2020, a monumental video for the channel would be posted, titled, Marking Displaces Return, Uckfield Rooftops. Mark would use this video as the icebreaker for a push towards more uploads, and for a while, he truly committed. He posted four more times within the span of just one week. At this point in Mark's channel, he had started to become somewhat of a local celebrity, as he would often wave to people from high up on the buildings he'd climb and promote his channel. These videos would then get shared around by a few locals and eventually result in more followers to his channel. There were some who disagreed with Mark and what he was doing, and that was reflective in a few dislikes seen throughout his videos and directly in a video he made addressing these kinds of individuals, humorously titled, When Life Gives You Idiots, You Make a Video. Despite these kinds of viewers though, there were an equal amount of supporters that could be found strewn about in his comments section, telling Mark how much they enjoyed his content and requesting certain locations for some of his videos. With all of this taken into account, it would be safe to assume that Mark was feeling very confident in his return to the platform, but what he would soon find himself even more grateful for was that he was soon to have something he had always wanted. No, it wasn't views or more subscribers. Mark was about to meet who he believed to be a genuine friend. Tragically enough, however, this would soon be revealed to be far from the truth. This is Lewis, the guy who's done a couple of videos with me. Uh, the water treatment facility and the um, and the um, college video. 
and you know awesome guy to have around on November 14th, 2020, a video was posted to Displace titled Police Escape at Uckfield College Demolition Site. Featured in this upload was Mark and a friend of his named Lewis. Together, the two of them explored, as you would expect, a demolition site at a community college located in Uckfield. Spanning over an hour and a half long, the two of them really seemed to hit it off as they creeped around the campus, sneaking into old staff rooms, the cafeteria, and doing their best to avoid detection from security. In the description, Mark stated that Lewis would be featured in further videos, something Mark seemed very pleased about. But before I get ahead of myself, allow me to answer what you may be thinking. Who is Lewis? Lewis Ashdown at the time was a 19-year-old resident of Uckfield. As for his early life, much like Mark, not much is known. More than likely, he lived a relatively normal life, much like anyone else. What is known about Lewis, however, is much like Mark, he himself had a passion for content creation. From exploring abandoned buildings to climbing them, his interests seemed to fall in line with that of Mark's. Allegedly reaching out to Mark's channel, with a comment expressing his desire to join in on one of his climbs, the two are believed to have soon become acquainted. In the final five uploads to Displace, Lewis would be featured in four of them. It was clear in these videos that Mark was truly thankful to finally have a friend with whom he could make content and share a passion with. Despite all this, however, Displace, after seeing 12 really strong, consistent uploads, would soon reach another hiatus just three months into 2021. This time, though, Mark wouldn't leave without discussing his headspace and how he reached his decision to pause and figure out not only the direction of his channel, but his life as well. On March 22nd, 2021, 2021, Mark hosted a 42-minute live stream on his channel, where he opened up where he was in life and why there may be a delay in videos for a while. He explains that he is getting older and that he wants to become a security officer, yet if he keeps getting into trouble, he could jeopardize his chances of pursuing that career path. He also speaks on how he is developing chronic back pain that seems to only be getting worse, and how he wishes he could make his channel his entire life much like his idols, but that he feels it may be time to grow up. Once more, let's watch this clip together. I've been doing some talking with Lewis. He's seeming like he wants to get back into climbing and stuff. I haven't actually done it since Christmas and I've got a bad back, right? It's been getting worse and worse lately. Don't know why I need to go to the hospital and have myself checked out. I am not sure where my channel is going to go. I don't know if I'm going to keep doing these videos. I don't know if I'm going to be doing different videos or whether I'm going to stop completely. At this point in time, I don't know. I've been trained to get my SIA license. Uh, over the past couple of weeks and i can't really risk that but i'm not sure at the moment i need to talk with lewis some more work something out i know i, I do want to stay you know I, I love doing this but at the end of the day i'm gonna have to up because you know i can keep doing this i mean ali law still does it he's in his 20s he's doing good for himself you know good good for him but i'm hardly an athlete i'm hardly a pro at this kind of thing I have to face reality, especially with my my back getting worse. I can I can barely run anymore, but I, I'm doing my best to try and work through it. But I am I'm training for my SIA. Um, yeah, that that would be good. Ultimately, I I wish I could have made my life out of this channel. It's it was a childhood dream, but it doesn't look like it's going to go anywhere. So I'll wrap it up now, and I'll start messaging Lewis, talking to him. As you can tell, Mark was at a bit of a crossroads in life, something a lot of teenagers deal with as they head into adulthood. Fans of Mark could recognize he was facing uncertainty, and many encouraged him to continue pursuing his dream, letting him know that they loved his videos and they didn't want to see him go. Even Lewis can be seen in this live chat under the username Moral Unknown, encouraging him to go on and assuring him that if he stopped uploading videos that he would be okay as he had plans to start a channel of his own. He even tried to raise Mark's spirits by inviting him out to partake in an exploration video at an abandoned pub with a friend of his. Lewis really seemed interested in supporting his friend here, and perhaps it was not only these words of encouragement from his fans, but from Lewis, someone he trusted, that brought Mark back into the creative spirit one last time. You know what, guys? I will give my channel another shot. I've already plugged in my action cam to start charging it. Alright, I'll give the channel another go. For all you guys.
Shortly after this live stream aired, Mark would announce that once again, this place was back and they had their sights on a high-end hotel located in Uckfield. Surely there was a greater risk of getting caught in a place like this, but Mark was willing to take it up a notch for his fans. About two weeks later, this place would see its second to last upload titled, Escaped Angry Workers Sneaking Into Buxted Park Hotel. Mark had kept his promise to his viewers. In this video, both Mark and Lewis arrived at the hotel in the dead of night. For over 40 minutes, the two explored its surrounding areas, sneaking behind windows to avoid detection before eventually finding an entrance through an unlocked door located on one of the upper levels, consistently watching each other's backs. All in all, the video was a success. Mark and Lewis both seemed to have a fun time together, and the future of this place as a whole seemed bright. On April 21st, 2021, Mark uploaded what would be his final video to this place. Its contents were simple enough. Mark climbed scaffolding, viewing the heights of his town much like he had done with his brother years ago. Truthfully, I think this video inadvertently works as a monument to Mark. It captures his life like any other day for him. It's a marker of who he was and what he set out to be. If you've watched up to this point, like me when I was researching this video, you may have grown a liking towards Mark. You might find that you relate to him and his desires to just have friends. Maybe you connected to his struggles of chasing his goals or becoming an adult. Perhaps you're a younger brother or sister who can relate to doing reckless stunts with your other sibling and the fun and memories that that brings, or you may simply find that he just seems like a good kid. All these attributes from what little I know of Mark is what makes this next section rather heartbreaking and hard to cover, as what follows is, at its root, a senseless act of horror against a young man who had his whole life ahead of him, whose only mistake was unknowingly calling a monster a friend. On May 29th, 2021, 39 days after the last upload to this place, Mark and Lewis were making plans to spend the night out together and have a few drinks. Nothing to suggest anything other than what would seem to be a regular outing for the two boys. Initially, the two had plans to meet up earlier in the day, but unexpectedly to Lewis, Mark had intended to bring their younger brother with them to their meetup, to which Lewis allegedly expressed his discomfort, leading to Lewis canceling his initial plans and postponing his outing with Mark later into the night. Agreeing on this new arrangement, Mark and his younger brother would spend the next several hours together, with Mark becoming somewhat intoxicated throughout their time. Before long, Mark and his younger brother went their separate ways, and Mark was now ready to meet up with Lewis. The two started their night by visiting the Marysfield Recreation Ground, where they would continue their night with what Mark believed to be simply a few more drinks as friends. However, when Mark had decided he had consumed enough for one outing. Completely unaware of his friend's actions, Lewis began to sneak more into his drinks. Eventually, as midnight neared, the two decided it was probably time to head home and call it a day. On the surface, it seemed the two of them had had a successful night. On their walk home, Mark placed a phone call to his aunt to inform her and his family of his whereabouts. He reassured her in this call that he was out with Lewis and that he would be home soon enough. Allegedly in this phone call, Lewis had also promised Mark's aunt that he would see to it that Mark would return home safely. As the hours began to pass though, neither Mark or Lewis would make it back home, causing their families to grow increasingly worried for their well-being. The following morning, after being unable to contact either of the boys, the families went to local police, and a missing persons investigation was launched almost immediately. It wasn't normal in Uckfield for two boys to simply disappear into the night without a trace. In an article titled Broken Uckfield Mom's Desperate Plea as Concerns Grow for Missing Teens, it describes how Mark had placed a phone call to his family at roughly 11.30 p.m. to say he'd be home, but that he didn't return which we already know. However, what it also states is that Lewis had been spotted the following day leaving an establishment, the White Hart Pub, located in Chapel Green, Crowborough. CCTV footage revealed that Lewis was very much alive and well, yet for some reason he hadn't tried to contact his family despite being missing for over 13 hours by this point. But what raised further questions was even though Lewis's last whereabouts had been located, Mark was nowhere to be found in any of the CCTV footage, and nobody had come forward to report seeing a boy matching his description. With both boys still declared missing, one being seen apparently in good health, began to raise suspicion as to why Mark and Lewis were separated at all. The following night on May 31st, shortly after the article we just mentioned was posted, Lewis discreetly returned home. According to his family, nothing seemed to be amiss. His behavior was normal and he seemed as if nothing had happened. 
almost as if he just had not been missing for over two days. With police urgently wanting to locate Mark safely and Lewis being the last person to have seen Mark, they were notified of Lewis's return and quickly rushed over to his home in hopes of getting much anticipated answers. However, when the police arrived to meet him, they discovered that once more Lewis had disappeared. At first, they were at a loss as to what to make of this situation, but presumably with permission from Lewis's parents, police conducted a search of his room, looking for anything that might help them understand what exactly was going on. On here. At this time, the investigation was still labeled as a missing persons case. Both boys were presumed to still be alive, though as police continued to search through Lewis's belongings, they would soon make a harrowing discovery. Tucked into a wardrobe, officers found what appeared to be bloodied articles of clothing. The forensics team was called in to test the DNA found on the clothes, and before long, a heartbreaking announcement had been made. The DNA was a match to that of Mark Williams. With Lewis nowhere to be found and a horrific discovery now made, the investigation was no longer classified as a missing persons case, and now is being seen of that of side. Yeah, keep your mate with you. Make sure he's someone you can trust. You know, and be careful is all I can say. Police were quick to put out an arrest warrant for Lewis Ashdown in connection to the disappearance of Mark Williams. The town was put on high alert and encouraged to provide any information they may have on the situation to authorities. Despite Mark not having been located yet, police believed at this time they had enough evidence to arrest Lewis for his murder. With officers now on the hunt for him, Lewis was going about his rather normal day as if nothing had happened. Lewis had left his home early on the morning of June 1st, 2021, so he could meet up with some friends for a game of football. Afterwards, he visited the movies with a friend, where they watched the horror film The Conjuring 3, The Devil Made Me Do It. When the movie had finished, Lewis was invited by his friend to go back to his house in Eastbourne for a few drinks and to see where the night would lead. What Lewis's friend was unaware of, though, was that over the next few hours, he would be finding himself in a nightmare of his own. By now, the police had located Lewis's whereabouts and were on their way to arrest him. Arriving later in the day, police were able to successfully find Lewis residing at his friend's home and promptly arrested him. After the arrest, Lewis's friend, whose identity is not disclosed, was brought in for questioning where he revealed to officers that Lewis had not only made a disgusting confession that would leave the tiny town of Uckfield disturbed for weeks to come, but that Lewis had recorded evidence to back up his claims. Lewis, now in confessed as if it meant nothing to him that he had ended Mark's life. It's assumed that on May 29th, both Mark and Lewis were walking down a road called Perryman's Lane near Heron's Gill. Mark had just finished the phone call with his aunt when he began to feel ill, due to the night's prior activities and Lewis's intentional deception. Revealing a blade he had taken from his mother's kitchen earlier that day in one hand, and his phone which was now recording in the other, Lewis had decided that it was time. There was no going back now. Plunging the blade downwards, he severely injured Mark in the back, causing him to fall to the ground in pain. He was begging for help, and I just wanted him to shut up, Lewis allegedly told his friend. According to Lewis's confession, Mark, who was now in dire need of medical assistance, begged Lewis to call him an ambulance, claiming that he believed he was dying. This only led Lewis into a blind rage. Now, before I describe the following event, I want to reiterate here that viewer discretion is advised. For obvious reasons, I have to censor some of the wording, but I, I can't reiterate enough to you that the context, even with censoring, the crime that took place is both horrific, disturbing, and disgusting. It's just, I don't, I don't know how you do this to another human being, um, but I guess, you know, you can't place reason on insanity. With that said, though, Lewis, weapon in hand, proceeded to injure Mark over a hundred times. Coroner reports would find in total 107 wounds had been inflicted onto Mark. Over the next hour, Lewis filmed his grisly act as a means to document what he was doing for his own personal satisfaction. Lewis, in the least possible graphic description, proceeded to remove Mark's eyes. Afterwards, he began to kick the now lifeless Mark, quote, like a football, before removing the clothing of his lower half and tossing Mark into a stream, like he was just some sort of trash on the side of the road. Horrifically recording the entire ordeal in a series of clips that collectively span over an hour and a half in runtime. And Lewis's confession, Lewis told his friend that he truly believed that Mark didn't deserve to be alive, and that he felt good about what he had done. He liked the way that it made him 
feel, expressing how he didn't want to stop at just him. I can't even begin to imagine the level of fear Lewis's friend must have been feeling at that moment. But what I can't begin to grasp is, is how Mark must have felt, as his life was tragically cut short for no reason at all by his best friend of all people. In his live stream where he's talking about, I don't know what to do with my channel, I don't know if it's even worth it, Lewis comes in and is talking, and the moment he recognizes that Lewis is in the chat, it's like five to ten seconds where he's brought back in and says, you know what guys, I think I'm gonna give my channel another shot. Because that's how much he cared about his friend, and that's how much he valued his friend. You know what guys, I will give my channel another shot. I've already plugged in my action cam to start charging it. Alright, I'll give the channel another go. For this sick and twisted, excuse my language here, piece of for no reason at all to just betray his friend because he felt like it, because he was bored, because he wanted to try it out. I just can't begin to comprehend how someone like that just is a human being, like how someone like that can just exist. Maybe I'm just living in a bit of a fantasy world. I'm going on a bit of a tangent here. It just, I can't even imagine how Mark must have felt in those moments. Even after Lewis had done this to him, he believed that Lewis would call him an ambulance. That's how much he trusted this guy. But anyways, let's just continue on and let's get right into the trial and what took place after that. On June 2nd, 2021, just one day after Lewis was arrested, police would tragically recover Mark's remains. With his confession to his friend, the DNA found in the clothes hidden in his room, and now the recovery of Mark himself, Lewis Ashdown was charged officially with the death of Mark Williams on June 3rd the following day. Now, initially, Lewis denied knowing Mark's whereabouts, but with the evidence stacked against him, he would eventually plead guilty to his crimes in October of the same year. On October 28th, 2021, Lewis Ashdown was sentenced to life with a minimum term of 27 years. He was convicted of in possession of an offensive weapon. It was reported that at his sentencing, like the coward he is, Lewis kept his gaze focused downwards, as to avoid making eye contact with Mark's family. In an article about Mark by Rose Locke for the Argus, it's mentioned that Mark's family made a statement that was later released by the Sussex police that reads as the following. We are feeling his loss every second and that will never change. Our hearts are broken. Rest peacefully, our cheeky boy, with so much love from mom, dad, and your whole family. Mark's mother would also go on to comment by the type of person he was in another statement found on a local website, Sussex Live. All he wanted was a friend. He was trusting. His vulnerability cost him his life. That night was the worst of my life and will forever haunt me. His life, future, and dignity were taken. A GoFundMe to cover funeral expenses for Mark was created by Lee Williams, with a goal of £1,000 or just shy of $1,300 USD. Community members came to support Mark and his family through numerous donations, reaching over six times its initial goal. You can find a words of support section on this page where people came to express their condolences through kind-hearted words and sympathy. Now, I assume through context, found in the comments of displays that Lee Williams is most likely Mark's brother. If we look at the comments of Mark's videos made with his younger sibling, we can find a comment by a user named Lee Williams, recalling their times together, stating, Miss you, my brother. I'll always remember the times we had. Love for Mark and the pain of loss he left in the hearts of many didn't stop there, though. The college in which Mark attended also paid tribute, remembering him as, quote, well-loved by all his tutors. His channel, Displace, which is still up to this day, can also be found with numerous comments of sympathy for Mark and the love they had for his content. A notable comment which caught my eye was from Taysan Day, of all people. You may know him as the Chocolate guy from the early days of the platform that reads, such a sweet, sweet angel of a man. He did not deserve what happened. How he says at 1505, keep your mate with you. Make sure it's someone you can trust. He must have been so shocked at the end that such evil exists. Yeah, keep your mate with you. Make sure he's someone you can trust, you know, and be careful is all I can say. At the end of the day, it's clear the world lost a bright young man that was loved by his family, community, and friends at the hands of a coward who deserves to be behind bars for the rest of his small life. 
I have no doubt that Mark would have grown up to really find himself as everyone deserves to do. He showed maturity from such a young age on weighing the decisions of career paths versus chasing dreams, and he showed dedication to his projects in pursuit of finding what made him happy. I can only hope that Mark's family can one day recover from this tragic loss, and when they remember him and the impact that he had on others, they're filled with joy to the young man who made their life special. Mark, while many of of us may have only learned of you through your tragedy. Your voice still reaches the hearts of many. Mark, may you rest in peace. I might be coming across as a bit dramatic with my wording here, but allow me if you will. When I think of displays, I think of a snapshot of someone's life. You can see Mark replying in comments to people of his videos, frozen digitally in time by in an active account. And in a darker sense, what also plagues my mind is that throughout these videos, you can actively watch Mark and Lewis together sneaking into buildings and running from security. It's eerie to know that Mark in all these is standing with a very person who would cut his life short. It's obvious that Mark thought the world of Lewis. He viewed him to be his nearest friend and wanted to chase the future with him. What was done to Mark will never sit right. It just feels like one of those cases where it's just too wrong to be reality. He was, like anyone who meets such a fate, undeserving of these kinds of acts. As a small memorial, I did some searching around in Uckfield to try and find a specific rooftop that I saw in a few of Mark's videos. It took a while, and I hope this doesn't sound like a shameless plug, but with the help of my Twitch chat, we were able to find this one unassuming building. Taking a screenshot from his video, marking displaces return turn where he waved down at the passerbyers of his town before getting caught by police, we were able to compare the storefronts to match up with this being the exact filming location. So if you ever find that you have the time and want to pay your respects to a fallen creator, go to Google Earth and visit 94 High Street and look upwards just a little, and there you will find where Mark, the rooftop king of Uckfield, once did what he did best. If you're watching this and you made it through today in the video, I just want to say thank you so much for being here today and supporting me and the channel. If you enjoyed what you saw, consider dropping a like and subscribe down below with a comment letting me know what you enjoyed about the video. I guess it sounds kind of dark when you cover a topic like this and be like, what did you enjoy about it? I don't really know how to word that, so if that sounds kind of bad, just forgive me on that front. I also want to give a big thank you to Oz Media for being the first featured guest on this channel. I really hope you enjoyed his reading and how he did things. Definitely go check him out down below if you don't already know who he is as he's a really great creator and puts a lot of effort into his content. If you want to reach me after the video, feel free to check out some of these links on screen. Definitely feel free to check these out as it's a really easy place to reach out and just say hello to me. If you'd also like to further help support this channel, feel free to check out my Patreon after this video. Here in a few seconds, I'll have those lovely individuals listed up on screen. Without further ado, once more, my name's Wonder. It was phenomenal to have you here. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Until next time, you take care and farewell. I want to give a warm thank you to those of you who support me over on Patreon. You help make videos like this possible. And a special thank you to Alien Ace Cat and Wolves Hunt and Packs for their high tier support. Your generosity is met with my personal thank you.